Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube. It's been a while since I put one of these videos out, so I want to take y'all through one of my ham and glute workouts for this off season. And ham and glutes for me has been a an area that I've struggled with a lot, but I've really found good movements that work really well that I can feel while I'm executing them. I think that's important moving into any of these workouts. Like I wouldn't say, you know, do my workout because that's what John does and you know he's a pro bodybuilder. Don't do that. Pick exercises that you feel. You know, and for me, some people have criticized some of my exercises and like, well, why don't you just do this and that? Because that's what everyone else does or whatever it may be. Um, because certain stuff I don't feel. So you'll, you know, I'll do some exercise a day that uh, you might not see everyone do, um, but I think they work really well for me and where I feel a lot of tension in the muscles that I'm intending to use. My first go-to and staple this off season has been a wide stance Smith machine squat. And I really like this exercise because I can really load the glutes well. The setup, you know, with is having my feet a little farther forward. And being that I'm in a Smith machine, I'm really able to stick my back, my butt out really, really far and get a lot of hip flexion and perform a good deal of hip extension through the movement. So that's when you will be using a lot of glutes and you are loading the glutes in the fully lengthened state, which that should have the highest force production possible. So this is a definitely a good compound movement to start with that we can really increase load on and be progressive with. Um, you, you will get some hamstring vomit, definitely adductors since I'm using a wider stance. And when I power lifted, that's all I did was sumo stance squat. And I think that's contributed a lot to my adductor growth. So I've kept these in because it's been just a good move for me and, and been pretty, pretty productive. Um, I would say like for your stance, you know, definitely will depend on your flexibility, mobility, but keeping the toes pointed out 45 degrees, and making sure the knees travel in the same direction as your toes. Otherwise, if you have knees going different direction of your toes, that starts binding the knee up. So I definitely, you know, watch in the mirrors, have someone watch your form and make sure uh, toes and knees continue in the same, same path. Um, I would just, you know, I said that my feet are pretty far out from underneath the bar because if you are directly underneath the bar, um, you are going to have to to sit back really, really far and might resemble more of a, a good morning. So I think you got to find that happy balance with with feet forward, with enough uh, hip extent, hip flexion, glutes sticking back, but not an excessive amount to where you're loading the spine too much. If you are in a sumo stance though, you should be able to stay fairly upright in the movement. So in this one, I'll do a work up to a set of like eight to 10 reps and I'll do a back off set. Um, try to hit it another 15 to 20 reps on the back off. And then from there, I move on. I go to barbell RDLs, which is another, another movement I wanna try to progress on and really improve at. Over time, I've gotten a lot better at using my hamstrings in this movement and, and keeping my lower back out of the movement. Um, if, if you have issues with that, you feel your lower back taking over, uh, video yourself from the side. Typically what I see with people is that they're not uh, rotating the hips and, and their hips stop. And then to get any lower, they're having to flex the spine. So you see that lower back start to round over like, like a fishing pole. Um, and you know, you're, you're, you're not taking, putting the load on the hams as much anymore. You're tucking those glutes and, and letting the spine and uh, erectors take the brunt of it. So uh, I would make, make sure, definitely make sure like, you know, practice without any weight at all. Just going through um, hip, hip flexion, sticking the glutes out really, really far. And when you feel those hamstrings tighten up and you keep a neutral spine, that's when you should come up from the movement. Don't go any lower than that. So I, I had my Smith squats as my glute movement. This is definitely like my compound uh, compound hamstring movement, we're gonna call it a compound because um, the, the knee joint necessarily isn't moving a lot, but it still has some movement there. But we're definitely keeping more, a um, higher degree of, of knee extension and a lot greater hip flexion than what we would see in our first movement. Hence, you're gonna have more hamstring uh, involvement here. And hamstrings are definitely gonna get a lot of loading in the lengthened position. So it is gonna be a big force production movement. So it's it's good to have as a one of you, some of your primary moves for the day. Same thing on this one, I, I work up to about a set of um, 
eight to 12 reps and I back off and wait and hit another set of 15 to 20 reps, something higher rep range. Um, and those are my mainstay compound moves that I'm doing on my ham and glute day. Uh, my other my other ham day that I've been rotating, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna start doing, I'll do a, um, a banded trap bar deadlift and belt squats, wide stance belt squats. So similar similar movement patterns in a way. Um, the banded, banded trap deadlifts are gonna have a little bit more trap involvement, which is kind of what I'm going for in that day too. So after that, I move on and I go into a superset of lying leg curl and reverse hyperextension. So I'm, I'm going from these you know movements where I get a lot of loading in the lengthened position to movements where I get it a high degree of loading in the shortening position. But they're also more isolation movements. So um, I, I prefer doing more metabolic stress work and keeping uh, higher reps on these type of movements. And a superset to uh, also another great way to add on a, a degree of increased metabolic stress too. So I'll start with lying leg curl and then jump straight to the reverse hyper. I'll do three rounds of this and I'll hit, try to hit 15 to 20 reps on that first set. You know, lying leg curls for seated leg curls. The the seated leg curl would will take out the bicep femoris to a degree and more using just the semi-membranosis. So I, I would lean more towards if you're going to pick a leg curl, um, sticking with your lying leg curl over, over seated. Uh, but you, you know we, and, and, but with that lying leg curl, you really need to make sure you are driving your hips down into the pad and you're not seeing them rotate up as you're flexing the knee. Um, with the reverse hypers, I'm just doing hip extension till I feel the glutes tighten and contract hard. So you'll get a lot of peak loading when the glutes are in the shortened position. But that's as high as you need to go. You know, what? I'm not trying to form like a hyper extension here, um, even though it is called a reverse hyper machine. Uh, I'm, I'm just letting the spine stay neutral and not coming up any higher than that. So go up till you get a full glute contraction. If you don't have a reverse hyper machine in your gym, uh, you could use a 45 degree back raise in place of it, or you could even lay uh, on an incline bench and put a dumbbell between your feet um, with you laying from the top of the incline bench. So basically the headrest of the incline bench is where your your hips are gonna be. Um, that's also another way that you could, you could perform like a, a reverse hyper. So I'll do three rounds of that. I keep the same weight for the whole th whole time. The reps are dropping down because I, I am taking each set to, to near near failure, which basically, uh, or failure, basically just a, a rep, or rep shy of it or I hit it. <clears throat> so then moving on from there, I move on to even, even higher rep uh, exercise. And I like using the wide stance 40 degree leg press and you know it it's another movement working in the lengthened position of the hams but i also i like it because i get some quad work as well into and adductor work so it's a good compound move um i'm locked in place and track so i can do this high rep work and rather than having to worry about like balance and stability so it's a good move to have if you're going to do something like that and i'll do just two all out sets of around 40 reps. And the, the pace is pretty constant. I'm trying to keep constant tension. And there's not a very slow cadence on the eccentric. It's kind of more pumping movement, but not bouncing. So um, I'll hit those two sets. And coming off from doing the superset with a lot of shortened movements, you can really feel the hams lengthen out in this one and get a good um, mind-muscle connection with it as well. But that's it, guys. I mean, it's it sounds pretty short and sweet once I lay it out like that. But I mean, I promise, to do it. It'll it'll it is taxing, especially taking those sets all out like you should be. But if you have any questions on it, leave it in the comments below. Happy answer for you guys. Uh, if you have any interest in my exercise programming training plans, uh, I do. I can write those out for you. Look at j3sportsrd.com. Also, any type of nutrition coaching, I do as well. So check out the website, and I'll talk to you guys next time.